today's lecture, we will start with the power. So what is the power? The power is the rate, is the time rate of the energy flow. So this flow of energy could be consumed or gained. But at the end, it is the time rate of the energy flow, and it's measured in watts. Joules per second. And the expression for the power is P equals to E divided by delta T, which you're interested in the, in the time rate of the energy within this specific time. So it's a scalar, it's not a vector. So if we want to put this into an example, and here we want to calculate the amount of energy consumed by a 100 watt bulb, light bulb, in one hour. Assume two significant digits here. So in this case, If we know the power is 100 watts and delta T is one hour, which is in seconds, 60 minutes times every minute is 60 seconds. Delta T is 3,600 seconds. Then based on the power, expression equals to energy divided by delta T, then energy is P time delta T. Energy here is 100 times 3600. And two significant digits, I can write energy as 3.6, 10 to the power five joules. This is the amount of energy consumed in one hour using a light bulb of 100 watts. Nowadays, we have way higher efficiency light bulbs that consumes way less energy in comparison with the, with the older technology one. Okay. Now, today's new topic as you know, we could not uh, finish the power from last in last lecture. So today we will be covering the momentum. We'll be the, we will be talking about the definition of the momentum and the relationship between the momentum and applied forces on that object that has momentum. Then we will introduce the definition of the conservation of momentum, and we will apply the conservation of momentum in collisions. Today, we will be covering one dimension of collisions. Again, our reference from textbook section 8.1 and 8.2. And in next lecture, we will be solving more examples of conservation of momentum for two-dimensional problems. So what is the momentum? The momentum is a quantity of motion that is the product of the mass of the object and the velocity this object has. It's a vector, as we have P vector equals to m v. Since the velocity is a vector and the mass is a scalar, then the product of the mass and the velocity is also a vector, which means the mass will only change the magnitude of this momentum. And the velocity is the one that is responsible for the direction and the momentum will follow the same direction of the velocity. The unit for the momentum is kilogram meter per second, which is the mass times the velocity. Now, if we want to 
experience a momentum change, then this has to be through applying a force, a net force on that object for a specific amount of time. How can we calculate this change in the momentum based on or starting from Newton's second law? And knowing that the net force equals to the mass times the acceleration, where I can now write the sigma f as f net equals mass times delta velocity divided by delta t. So if I rearrange, I get, by multiplying with delta t, I get delta t times f net equals to m sine delta v, where delta v is the velocity change. Now, if you recall, we've just introduced the momentum where we said that the momentum equals to the mass times the velocity. And if you take the change on both sides of this equation, then I get delta P equals to M times delta V. And this is indeed what we have seen earlier. And this way we can relate the change in the momentum to the applied force or the net force that's acting upon this object, which is delta P, a change of in momentum on an object will happen if I have a net force applied on that object. And it's a function for the time that force has been applied on or acting upon this object. So we have an object that has a momentum, and then we applied a force for a specific amount of time on that object. This resulted into a change in the momentum for that object. This change is calculated, as you can see here. Delta P, which is a vector, it was to that force times delta T. So it is in the same direction as the applied force. So this momentum is a useful property when it comes to calculating parameters due to collisions, as we will see later on. So in, uh, in order to understand how do we calculate the momentum change, Let's do this example. So in this example, we have a baseball of mass 0.15 kilogram traveling with a horizontal velocity of 38 meter per second west. After the ball is hit by the bat, it has a horizontal velocity of 51 meter per second east. What is the change in the momentum? What's the change in momentum of the ball? So we're looking for delta P. So what do we have here? We have the, the velocity before the, before the incident of hitting it, of applying the force on it. And we have the velocity after it's been hit by the bat. So for me, in order to solve that problem, I need to, to draw the, the diagram showing my baseball here with this velocity v1 so here we have the baseball being hit so this is west this is the baseball with a velocity v1 and then after it got hit with the bat the velocity changed and went 
east. So we have the mass here, 115 kilograms. We have the magnitude of V1 as 38 meter per second. We have the magnitude of V2, which is 51 meter per second. We need to calculate the change in, in momentum. Okay, so the first thing we, we need to do here is to decide on the coordinates that defines my positive direction of the motion. So for me here, I will take X and Y, although I don't need the, the Y here. The whole motion is happening along the horizontal level, so they're all on the X axis. So if I want to calculate delta P, which is a vector, I'll put the equation for what I have, which is M times delta V. And delta V here means the final velocity minus the initial velocity or minus the first velocity. So in this case, this delta V is indeed V2 minus V1, or delta P equals two M, which is 15 times V2, based on my positive direction for the X and on the direction of V2. What shall I substitute V2 with? Positive 51 meter per second, minus. What about V1? Negative 38. So in this case, delta P is 13.4 kilogram meter per second. And the direction is pointing, since it is a positive, it will be pointing East. Maybe you can, this is the magnitude, and then delta P is pointing east. Okay. So this is how we calculate the change in momentum. Any question about how did we calculate the change in momentum? Okay, so part B, if the baseball is in contact with the bat for one millisecond, what average force does the bat exert on the ball? So we need to calculate the force, neglect friction effects. Again, neglecting friction effects is important here. We'll, we'll see that later on when we calculate, when we go through the conservation of momentum. But here for part B, I need the force, which basically delta B equals to F net times delta T. Or if I am to calculate the magnitude for F net, F net is delta P divided by delta T, or F net is 13.4 divided by one millisecond, which is one or 10 to the power minus three seconds. And in this case, F net 
as 13.4 10 to the power 3 Newton. Again, if I want to define the direction, then F net as a vector is 13.4 10 to the power 3 Newton east. Right? Now let me ask you this question. Based on our understanding of the force and the momentum, if I have a 12 Newton force of tension applied to pull a 1.2 kilogram textbook straight up for a period of three seconds, what is the resulting change in momentum of the textbook? Assume that G is 10 meter per second squared if needed. So we have a textbook. That textbook was at a velocity. Let's assume it was at rest. And then I pulled it up for three seconds. What are you expecting the change in momentum to be? Now, if it starts from rest and went up for three seconds and stopped right there, the force is still applied on it, right? But the momentum has not changed. If you look at the velocity starting from rest and then reaching a point where it stops, although the force is still applied, but the mom momentum did not change. So in this case, if the momentum did not change or the velocity eventually was not changing or did not change, velocity did not change means that the momentum did not change means that the change is zero. So this usually happens to an object that's coming with a momentum and then you applied a force right on it and then it was it has seen a change in the momentum that caused it to change the velocity and, and change maybe the direction. So we have derived this expression that basically uh, demonstrate the effect of the applied force on an object that has a momentum. And we have seen that applying a force on an object that has a momentum resulted into a change in the momentum. But what happens if this change is, if that change in the momentum is zero due to the net force being zero? In this case, the momentum before equals the momentum after. If the change is zero, this means the momentum before equals to the momentum after. And this happens when the forces are balanced. For example, if I have two objects and those two objects are within the system that I'm studying and those two objects collided, based on the Newton's third law, one of them will apply a force on the other one and the other one will apply the same force opposite direction, which means that the net force is zero. The net force is zero within this system. So if the net force is zero, are you expecting any change in the momentum before the collision and after the collision? Net force is zero means delta P is zero, means that the momentum before is the same as the momentum after. So what is the incident? The collision. So if the net force is zero in this system, which means the change in momentum is also zero, this means I have a conservation of momentum here. The momentum before the collision equals the momentum after the collision. And this is the definition of the conservation of momentum. This happens within your system. If you have, if you are looking at a collision 
within that system, you're interested in this collision of those two objects, then in this case, based on the Newton's third law, you have a balanced forces. And having a balanced forces means you have a net force of zero, means you have a delta P of zero, means you have a conservation of momentum. So delta net force of zero means a change of momentum to be also zero. And this means conservation of momentum. The momentum before the collision equals the momentum after the collision. And in this case, we will write it as the following. Either sigma P before equals to sigma P after. Or you can use this notation, sigma p vector equals to sigma p prime vector. The first one represents the before the collision and the second one represents after the collision. So this is the conservation of momentum. In the collision, momentum before the collision is, and that's a vector, equals to the momentum after the collision. So let's look at this example. We have a couple of examples here to solve, and things will become clearer to you once we start solving those two examples. So two cars, Christine's car is approaching a traffic light with a constant speed of 5.6 meter per second and a mass of 1.3, 10 to the power of three kilograms. Tim's car is stopped at the traffic light with a mass of 1.2, 10 to the power of 3 kilograms. If Christine bumps into Tim's car and their bumpers lock together, so both cars became one entity. So she came, she hit the car, and both cars, they got locked together, they became one entity. What is their velocity immediately after the collision? Neglect friction. We need to calculate the velocity right after the collision. So in order to do so, the first thing to do when you have a collision problem is to draw the, the diagrams for both cases, before collision and after collision, because you're dealing with vectors and you need to put down all those vectors. And sometimes you need to assume some directions with respect to your uh, reference, which is the coordinate that you're going to choose. So it is extremely important to draw, to draw both diagrams. So let me start first with before the collision. Before collision, I have Christine coming with V1, and she has M1, while Tim's car, M2, had a zero velocity. So this is west and after the collision I have both of them locked together so I have here m1 plus m2 one entity the masses are, are added here. Now, the direction was not given to me. I need to assume a direction. Now, before I do this, let me put my coordinates here. So if I put my coordinates, x and y, x, 
y, and you can pick x and y the way you want, x to the right positive or x to the left positive, it doesn't matter. So let me pick this direction. To be my v1 prime equals v2 prime and maybe call it v prime so both are equal after the collision now the conservation of energy says sorry conservation of momentum says sigma p equals to sigma p prime let me start with the sigma p, which is before collision, sigma p equals to m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. Now, v2 is zero. We know that the car was stopped at the traffic light. So, sigma p equals to 1.3 10 to the power 3 so this is we had uh, here m1 is 1.3 10 3 kilograms m2 kilograms we have v1 5.6 meter per second we have v2 zero so what do you think i should substitute v1 with V1 is, yes, is it 5.6 or negative 5.6, negative 5.6, plus zero, right, because V2 is zero. Sigma P is minus seven point three ten to the power of three. What about Sigma prime? Sigma prime is M one plus M2, they became one entity, right? Times V prime. Sigma P prime is 1.3 10 to the power of 3 plus 1.2 10 to the power of 3 times what do you think v prime should be substituted with i don't know the magnitude of v prime right i don't know the magnitude that's what i wanted to calculate but i have assumed something here that i need to take in my consideration when i substitute this variable word what's the thing that i have as assumed I have assumed direction. I assume that the that V prime is going to be pointing west, right? I have assumed it this way. I could have assumed it east. I assumed it west. So when I substitute V prime, 
I should substitute it with V prime or minus V prime? Minus V prime. So I'll have it here as minus V prime. So sigma V prime as 2.5, 10 to the power of three. I have the minus here, V prime. Now, equating both minus 7.3, 10 to the power of 3, equals to minus 2.5, 10 to the power of 3, V prime. And in this case, V prime is Two point nine meter per second. So V prime is positive two point nine meter per second, which means the assumption that I have taken for the direction is correct. If I have taken V prime to be in the opposite direction, then I would have substituted V prime as positive V prime. And then when I do the calculation, V prime would be negative, which means opposite of what I have assumed. So either way, you're going to get the correct answer based on the coordinates that you put, based on the positive reference that you adopt. At the end, you should be getting the correct answer. It doesn't matter which direction you have taken your reference. It's a reference. Some of them are this way, the other one. The others are the other way. Okay, so this is how we calculated the V prime or the velocity after the collision for this problem using the conservation of momentum. Now let's look at the second example. In the second example, we have same scenario, but this time Tim is not stopped at the traffic. Tim was heading facing Christine. So, same scenario for Christine. She's coming with 5.6 meter per second, constant velocity west. But Tim was driving, heading toward Christine, which is the direction I know now but I don't know the speed. I know the direction, but I don't know the speed. And then they collided together and they have combined velocity now. Now, now they gave me the combined velocity of 2.4 meter per second east, going east. How fast was them traveling? Neglect fraction. Okay, so the only difference I have here now, again, I'll draw the two scenario, the before collision and after collision. Before collision, I have Christine M1 with the velocity V1, and I have Tem M2 with the velocity V2 that I know the direction, but I don't know the magnitude. So this is before. So we have east. And I will put my coordinates as well. X, Y. So again, I have M1, 1.3 kilograms, M2, 1.2 kilograms. I have V1, 5.6 meter per second. 
V2 is unknown. However, if I am to put the vector here just to, it is pointing east. So I don't know the magnitude. What I can say here that this is V2 pointing east. Now the, the V1 prime, which equals to V2 prime, which equals to V prime is 2.4 meter per second. Pointing east. So after collision, they became one entity of M1 plus M2, and they are pointing east, V prime. This is after collision. Again, if I put the conservation of momentum, sigma p, sigma p prime, start with sigma p, which is m1 times v1, plus M2 times V2. One point three ten to the power of three times V1. V1? What shall I substitute V1 with? Negative 5.6. Plus 1.2, 10 to the power of 3, times V2. What shall I substitute V2 with? Positive V2. Okay, rearranging. As... Minus 7.3, 10 to the power of 3, plus 1.2, 10 to the power of 3, V2. After collision, as M1 plus M2 times V prime. One point three, 10 to the power three, one point two, 10 to the power three, times V prime. What shall I substitute V prime with? V prime. Yes. 2.4. Positive or negative? Positive. Because as you can see here, this is the direction of V prime is in the same direction of my X axis, the positive X axis. So that's the reference that I'm using all for the for the vectors. So I have here 2.4. So sigma p prime equals to 2.5, 10 to the power of 3 times 2.4. This one is six ten to the power of Now again, from the conservation of momentum, I have minus 7.3, 10 to the power of three plus 
10 to the power of 3, B2, equals to 6, 10 to the power of 2. Rearranging, I have 1.2, 10 to the power of 3, B2, equals 7.3, 10 to the power of 3, equals 6, 10 to the power of 3, and V2 is 13.3 10 to the power of 3 divided by 1.2 10 to the power of 3 and V2 is 11.1 meter per second. So this is how we calculate uh, the velocity of Thames car before the collision. So you can, you can, one of the observations that you can see here is, notice the velocity of Thames and Christine, they're facing each other. One of them is almost two times the velocity of the second car. And notice that uh, the resulting velocity for both of them when they collided ended up to be in the same direction of the greater velocity. I would like to stop here. Mm -hmm.